Yo yo, welcome to lesson 43. Today, we're finally going to learn about React, a JavaScript library that makes building user interfaces super easy. In the past, we've been doing things the hard way. Look how much code it took us just to write this Pokédex app. Instead, now we're going to learn React and speed up our development time. So first things first, we need to install Node.js, which allows us to run servers and also run JavaScript code outside of a browser. Next, for Mac users, you will need to open your terminal, and for Windows, you will need to open your command prompt. Before we do anything cool, let me give you a quick intro to how to use the terminal. First things first, we have the ls command, which lists out all the files inside the current directory. Next, to change the current directory, we just have to type cd and give it a path. So let's go to my desktop. And if you type pwd, it will give you the full path name of the current working directory, aka where you currently are. Next, type mkdir, which will create a new folder in the current directory. And then after the space, you will provide the name for the folder. And in this case, let's do intro to react and then type cd to go into the new folder. If you hit tab while you're typing, it will autocomplete for you. And if we type ls, nothing will show up because this is a brand new folder. Next, let's run this command, npx create react app my app. Next, follow the prompts and press y so that it can install the necessary packages for us to use react. This will take a few minutes, so I'll just speed up the video. After it's done, run ls and here you'll see my app. So now let's cd into my app and then we can run the command npm start. This will boot up a development server so that we can work with React. And congrats, we are now running React on localhost 3000. Next, open the project My App inside VS Code or any code editor that you want. Cool, first let's go through the files very quickly. First, you have the node modules, and we don't really have to worry about this for this tutorial, so let's skip that. Next, we have the public folder, and inside the public folder, you'll have your index.html, your fave icon, and etc. So this is anything that a user can access directly on your website. For example, if you go back to the browser and you type slash fave icon.ico, you're going to find the icon of this website. Now let's take a look at the index.html. It's pretty empty. There's not much inside here, but I want you to pay attention to line 31. Here we have a div and it's given the ID root. So take a mental note of this because we'll revisit this later. So now let's go to source and the source is the meat of our React app. This will contain all the code that's necessary to render our application. Here we have the get ignore, which basically allows us to specify files that we want to ignore in version control. Next, we have package.json, which is basically a config file that stores useful information about our application. And then we also have package.json, which is a generated file based on your package.json. So we can ignore that for now. And finally, we have a readme, which basically allows you to describe your application and how to run it and etc. Now let's go to index.js and let's take a look at line 7. Here it's saying conch root equals react dom dot create root document dot get element by id root. So it's getting an element that has the id root from the document, which we've seen before. And if you remember inside the index.html, this is the element with the id root. So without going into too many details, all we're doing here is we're saying we're going to take this root element and we're going to render react components inside of it. So here we have react strict mode, which basically just adds extra error handling and warnings to help you find issues within your components. And then here we have this app. If you're on Mac and you hold command and click app, it's going to take you to the file app.js. Where basically in here, you have a function called app and inside the body of the function, it basically just returns HTML. So instead of creating elements and adding elements inside other elements, React will give us the ability to write HTML and JavaScript together in one file. So for example, let's create a component. To do that, we just have to create a function. So function, let's call it paragraph, and open the brackets, and open the squiggle brackets, and then hit enter. And then inside the body, just do return, and open the parentheses. And inside here, we could do a p tag, and just put Vincent is cool. And now to use this paragraph component, all we have to do is open the tag, and in VS Code, it will give you auto completion. So now we can put paragraph like this, and then we can just close the tag, and now hit save. And now if you go back to your dev server, if you scroll down, you're going to see Vincent is cool. And the cool part about this is we can copy and paste this paragraph as many times as we want. And if we hit save, and we don't even have to refresh the page, just scroll down. And here you can see Vincent is cool is repeated many times. And that's basically the power of React. You can write your UI very easily, and it is also very reusable. Feel free to try this out and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. In the next lesson, we're going to dive a bit deeper into React. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.